Hi there, my name is Lo. Welcome to my channel where I discuss everything between Hermes and grocery bags. So today I am doing my first official tag video. How cool is that? I've been tagged by the lovely Danny from This Is Danny O to do a video about the frugal habits of luxury lovers. Danny started this tag together with Paula from the channel with A Touch of Luxury. Both of these are great channels. They will be linked down below, obviously, with their respective tag videos. The eye candy I have here today is this rose bag from the brand My Oh My. It is not a luxury bag, but it's from a Dutch brand and I thought it was a pretty good match with my outfit today but without further ado let's jump into the tag so today i'm going to talk about a number of somewhat bigger things i suppose that i don't really spend a lot of money on which then leaves me with a budget to buy handbags and i'm doing this because overall i wouldn't really say i am very frugal i used to be very frugal when i was in college and that was great because together with the help i got from my parents and the financing i got from the government to do my studies i could actually start my life debt free and with quite a bit of savings to make a down payment on a house a number of years later but nowadays i have a pretty decent income and i don't spend all too much time thinking about the smaller things in life that i do or do not want to buy obviously there are some smaller things danny points out in her video that she never buys bottled water that's also something that i never do because water from the tap in the netherlands is basically amazing it's i think some of the best in the world so i only buy bottled water to keep it in my car for emergencies for example then when it comes to luxury items i already did a video before on this where i'm pointing out that i am just a crazy bag lady i'm very happy to once in a while spend money on a pretty handbag but apart from that I'm quite frugal when it comes to luxury items. I think that most of them are not really worth it to me. With other luxury items, I'm finding that they either don't really have a purpose to me at all, like a key holder, or they don't have a purpose to me in big amounts. Like I only need one card holder. I'm not going to switch out of my card holder or I'm scared that they will just wear too quickly. So when it comes to handbags, that's all very well in balance for me but with a lot of other luxury items that's not really the case so when it comes to luxury i'm actually quite frugal which again is good because it leaves me with a budget to spend on handbags so what are some other things i don't spend a lot of money on well first of all vacations so here i'm really thinking about trips going somewhere staying somewhere that kind of thing so with vacations there's definitely a frugal aspect to it i find vacations to be quite expensive you're really going to spend a premium being somewhere else opposed to being in your own home and frankly i'm really fortunate that i actually kind of like it in my home and around my home so i've been staycationing for pretty much as long as I can remember. It's perhaps also related to the fact that when I was growing up, we never went on vacation during the summer and not going on vacation during the summer. That made it quite difficult to go on vacation elsewhere in the year because I had to go to school. So I'm actually quite used to taking free time around the house and just enjoying myself either reading a book or going into nature or just taking time for things that while working I wouldn't really have time for. So there's that. And as I already pointed out in another video, going on vacation just gives me massive decision fatigue. I'm really a maximizer when it comes to decision making. And if you go on vacation, I feel there's so many parameters that you can take into account, deciding where you are going, where you are staying, what you are going to do, that the whole process leading up to the vacation is already not very enjoyable to me. So nowadays I've kind of outsourced most of that decision making to my boyfriend. And if we go on vacation, I just try to tag along as much as possible but then still we might just go on vacation once a year or once every two years and most of the time I have away from work I just spent staycationing all right then the second thing eating and drinking outside of the house so think about going to restaurants or getting a coffee to take away again this is something that I find relatively expensive to just getting and preparing food yourself eating in a restaurant I find also way more expensive than just ordering food and eating it at home and nowadays, especially with inflation and the cost of living, doing these types of things have just become like so much more expensive than they used to be. 
and my boyfriend and I, we would order food every week. But even more recently, we found ourselves debating about what food we then wanted to get on Friday because that's then the day that we order food. And more often, we found ourselves not really in the mood to be spending that type of money while we could also just grab an easy meal from the supermarket, for example. So how expensive this has become has definitely had an impact on how often we order food. And then there's also the aspect that my boyfriend and I, we get both very very good food and coffee at the office and we are not charged for that so in that sense we are already eating and drinking out a couple of times a week we also have less of a need to be going out to get food and beverages and then the final thing I want to touch upon and I think this is gonna come back a number of times is that we are both pretty introverted for me that really reflects in the sense that being around other people drains my social battery and if I'm going to a busy restaurant for example and there's just a lot of chatter around me from other people that can kind of wear me out especially if you're in a restaurant for very long or if you had a long day or both and given that it's already a pretty expensive experience going out to eat is not always worth it to me then also come out of that experience with less energy than I went in so having food at a restaurant will obviously make the food better but what I will prefer more often is just to get food from somewhere and then eat it somewhere else and that somewhere else could either be our home but sometimes we also get food and just go out into nature and have a little picnic of some sort. Then the third category of things I'm not spending a lot of money on I'm going to group in salons so think about hair salons nail salons eyelash salons massage salons all of these things so again these are things I find pretty expensive also because you need to have them done on a repetitive basis. So with my nails, for example, they grow pretty fast. I feel that after two weeks, I'm ready to have my nails done again and going to a nail salon every two weeks or let's say that I wanna stretch it up to three weeks, that would still be quite expensive. Also, it consumes quite a bit of time, especially if you do multiple of these things. And then you might say, well, going to a salon that's sort of a relaxation and I know that it is for a lot of people but personally I don't really like being touched by well especially not by strangers but also by people I don't know all that well again being an introvert I'm not the biggest fan of making small talk with people so overall going to these types of salons is not a very enjoyable experience to me I will go to the hairdresser a couple of times a year whenever I feel it really becomes necessary. But when it comes to my nails, for example, actually I didn't do my nails for, I think about one and a half years. You will see that on my earlier videos, but I really used to be into doing my nails and I'm getting kind of back into that. So what I have on my nails now is nail dip and then simply with a nail sticker from Sheen on top of that. So this is a manicure that I guess didn't even cost me two euros, which is a lot cheaper than getting this sort of thing done at a nail salon. Then the fourth thing I'm going to say is concerts. Concerts and festivals. And I was kind of triggered to think about this because in the Netherlands we recently had Harry Styles coming over and Beyonce and we had Pink Pop, which is one of the biggest festivals in the Netherlands. I think that prices for concert tickets but also for festivals have become really expensive, at least if you are going to the bigger festivals and the bigger concerts. And frankly, that is just not really worth it to me. First of all, there's no big artist that I like so much that I'm willing to spend so much money on seeing them perform live. Beyonce, for example, was performing in the Amsterdam Arena, which is actually a football or soccer stadium. So I've been there for a concert before years ago, and I know that the sound is not great because it is a football stadium. It's not meant to be a stage. It's also really big. So the odds of you seeing Beyonce bigger than this are very slim or ticket prices will be absolutely crazy and personally I also don't really enjoy this massiveness. I do occasionally go to smaller concerts which is then really nice because usually the stages where they perform the sound is better, you get closer to the artist and the ticket prices are not that crazy. However, I do tend to like a bit more of the alternative music so having a mosh pit around the stage that's not uncommon for the artists that I will see perform. I'm 
not that big and I've learned the hard way that standing in a mosh pit is not a great idea so nowadays I will always maintain some distance <laughs> to the stage um, but I'm losing my train of thought here. Concert is just something that I'm not really willing to spend very big money on. And then the final one and this might be a bit controversial it doesn't really have to do all that much with being frugal either but it is something that most people even I suppose a lot quite a bit of money to and that is frankly that my boyfriend and I don't really have the traditional family lifestyle so even though we've been together for over 15 years we never really felt an urge to get married we have everything we need arranged legally and that's what we found important but marriage to us was just not really that cherry on the cake but that also meant that we never had to save up for a wedding for example and even if we would get married, I think we would have an extremely small ceremony because again, with the introversion, being center stage all day long with so many people around you, I think that would be just a bit too much for me to really enjoy. So that's one thing. And then the other thing is that we are dual income with no kids. We do have two cats, but those are not nearly as costly as children. So the cost element in itself is not super relevant here. There obviously was a time where I didn't feel financially stable enough to have a family. But overall, this is really a lifestyle choice. If I had children, I think that's probably where most of my money would go. I think for new generations, there's just a lot of expenses coming their way. I think I would probably feel I shouldn't be spending too much money on frivolous things like designer handbags again i make a decent living but i don't think i make enough to have money for both so these are my insights on the matter now that i have been tagged i'm going to tag some other people as well obviously they will be linked down below if you are not tagged but you have a youtube channel and you want to do this tag go ahead and do it please mention me so that i'm notified of your video because i'd love to hear what you have to say on the matter for now remember there's a styling a situation and a taste for everything so don't judge wear whatever the bag you like until next time or as we would say in dutch doei <laughs>